All right, so let's talk about error handling in JSPs now. So basically what kind of errors can one expect in a JSP page? We know that a JSP is nothing but HTML with some Java, right? So typically you will have some Java type errors and some HTML type errors in your JSP page, right? Talking about the Java type errors, we know that we everyone writes certain amount of Java logic uh, or Java code in the JSP page in terms of scriptlets, expressions, declarations, and all the stuff, right? But uh, most of the time, if at all you are writing any kind of business logic in your JSP page, you would be writing it in a scriptlet, right? And this is the place where most of your Java programming errors in a JSP page would reside, right? And how do you handle these errors? You can write your basic system print statements to track your different variables you've been modifying and all this stuff. But uh, if at all you're having uh, a hu huge amount of code in your JSP page, huge amount of Java code in your JSP page, and you're not able to figure out the issue, it's highly recommended that you use the try-catch block. And uh, even you'll be surprised to figure out the defect within minutes when you use the try-catch block in the JSP page. And most of these errors occur at runtime, right? So basically, even when you are testing, uh, you probably wouldn't uh, come across certain scenarios which uh, result in these errors. And suddenly, out of the blue, they pop out of nowhere. And uh, so these are uh, typically difficult to identify. Right? But there is one type of error which is easy to identify. And those are the HTML type of errors, right? So we know that uh, we've got a ton of uh, HTML uh, scripting elements in HTML, right? We have different elements like HTML, head, body, table, and all those things. So you might, uh, by mistake, uh, write an uh, element name incorrectly or forget to close some element or something like that. So those kind of small HTML issues uh, could occur in your JSP page. And you will find out an HTML error as soon as you, the moment you launch your page. So if at all you have any HTML errors in the JSP page, when you launch your page, it's not going to show up properly, right? And that's the point where you can immediately identify that there was some error in the HTML and you can quickly fix that. So these are very easy to figure out and they can be caught during testing itself, right? No big worries. But why is error handling so important in JSPs? Okay. We know that a JSP is nothing but an HTML in the end, right? And this is what the end user sees, right? So that means to the entire world, the JSP page is the face of your web application, right? So the end user really doesn't care what kind of complex algorithms you are using at the back end. He doesn't really care what kind of complex logic you have written in the back end. The only thing the end user is worried about is what he sees on the page. Right? So if whatever he if what's whatever is there on the page he likes it, then you are great. And if whatever is there on the screen the end user doesn't like it, whatever business logic you write on the back end is of no use, goes all, all goes in vain, right? So that's the reason why error handling in a JSP page is extremely important. Right? So let's just have a look at two different error pages which are shown and let's see which one is better than the other, right? So this is one error page. So the user has requested for some page and uh, the request could not be processed because there was some error, but uh, the system has given a very beautiful uh, error message page saying that we are sorry, the page is not available and so and so, blah, blah, right? And this is error page number two. It simply displays a 404 page cannot be displayed error message, which really doesn't give you any information. So you don't really know if this page is unavailable at all, if this website is down or something is wrong with the code or what not, right? So really don't have any idea of what is happening behind the scenes in this scenario too. But in scenario one, the system has given you a very neat message saying the reason for error and come back after some time or something like that, right? So from the end user perspective, 
a error page one is far more better than an error page two, right? So you should give a user a brief description of an error message of why that error has happened, or ask them to come back to try after some time or something like that, instead of just throwing a 404 page cannot be displayed as message, right? And how do you achieve it? Error pages comes to your rescue. So error pages are nothing but simple JSP pages again, but with a difference. And the only difference is you have this page directive attribute called is error page, and you set that attribute to true. So as soon as you set the is error page attribute to true in the page directive, your JSP page becomes an error page now, right? And it can be used as an error page. And this is the error page which will be showing to the end client when there is any kind of error. Right. So we know that now we've got to show some fancy error page to the to the end user whenever there is an error. And we also developed our error page now. But how do you display this error page to the end user? The end user actually requested for some other page. He didn't he did not request for this page. So how do you actually submit this page to the user, show this page to the user? You can do it using two ways. So Scenario one, this is my main JSP page and uh, probably somewhere here there is some kind of error which has happened in my JSP page. So now whenever there is this error in my JSP page, I want to redirect it to the error page which I just coded now and show that lovely message to the end user, right? And how do I do that? I do that using the error page attribute on the page directory. So whenever there is an error in this JSP page, the JSP engine is going to look at the page directive and see if there is any error page defined. And if there is an error page defined, it is going to redirect you to this error page. So whenever there is an error in this JSP page, I am redirected to this error page and that error page is shown to the end user, which gives a brief description of the error message to the end user, right? Now let's say that uh, based on different type of errors, I want to redirect the user to different error pages. So if the page was not found, I'll display some error message to the user and if there is some kind of null pointer exception or something like that, I'll display some other page to the end user. How can you do that? You can do that using the web.xml. So you can define error pages even in web.xml. So within the error page element, you write an exception type and say that whenever there is an exception of type my exception in the, any of the JSP pages, I want to redirect it to the this error page. And you can also alternatively say whenever there is an error with an error code 404, I want to redirect it to this error page. Right. So here again you would have noticed that there are two ways I can again define this. One is using the exception type and the other is using the error code, if at all you know the error code, right? So this is how you code your error pages and show your error pages to the end user whenever there is an error in the JSP pages. And error handling is extremely important in your JSP pages, right?